Hey there everyone, today I'm going to be talking about psychology, but to be more specific, I'm going to be talking about mood disorders. Well, what is a mood disorder? A mood disorder is defined as any of several psychological disorders characterized by abnormalities of the emotional state. It is also called affective disorder. Mood disorders. Mood disorders include bipolar disorder and major depressive disorder. Understanding mood disorders is important. That is why scientists and medical doctors at the UCLA Medical Center are studying mood disorders. The disorders. The emotional extremes of mood disorders come in two principal forms. The first is major depressive disorder. Depression In psychology, depression is considered the common cold of psychological disorders. In a year, 9.5% of women and 8.5% of men report depression worldwide. Doctors only diagnose major depressive disorder when signs of depression start to last two weeks or more and are not being caused directly or as a side effect of drugs and medical conditions. Symptoms include lethargy, fatigue, feelings of worthlessness, loss of interest in family and friends, and loss of interest in activity. The second is bipolar disorder. Formerly called manic depressive disorder, this involves two extreme emotional states. To put it simple, this is a disorder with an alternation between a depressed and manic state. The following symptoms can signal bipolar disorder. The depressive symptoms can include being in a state of gloom, withdrawing from society, unable to make decisions, the inability to process fast, and showing extreme tiredness. The manic symptoms, which you will find are the complete opposite, ex uh, mean elation, euphoria, desire for action, hyperactiveness, and multiple ideas. Many great poets, writers, and composers suffered from bipolar disorder. They managed to accomplish many creativity-involved projects during their manic phase, but not during their depressed phase. Such celebrities include Demi Lovato, singer Britney Spears, even though it's only rumored for her, and in my opinion, very funny actor, Ben Stiller. Next stop, explaining mood disorders. Since depression is so prevalent worldwide, investigators want to develop a theory of depression that will suggest some possible ways to treat it. Lewinson noted the, that a theory of depression could explain the following. The first is behavioral and cognitive changes, such as acting out and doing things a person would normally not do. The second would be finding the common cause of depression, which could go a long way in forming new treatments and strategies to prevent becoming depressed in the first place. The third is difference in gender. As you can see in this graph, women show higher levels of depression than men. Now this can be for many number of things such as environmental effects, biological effects, and the simple reason that women tend to be more open about their emotions than men do. Depressive episodes self-terminate is the fourth. Now this is an important one to do research in since if doctors can figure out how this happens they can possibly replicate, replicate it in other patients to help them. Stressful events often precede depression. This is pretty self-explanatory since depression usually occurs after something really bad happens. That causes your emotions to take a turn for the worst. The sixth, but not last, depression is increasing, especially in teens. There can be many reasons why this is happening, ranging from social to environmental and internal pressures. If as a whole the youth is becoming more depressed, it may mean that society is playing a big role in this. Suicide. Whatever the cause is, the most severe form of behavioral response to depression is suicide. Each year, some 1 million people commit suicide worldwide. Suicide statistics examine national differences, racial differences, gender differences, age differences, and other miscellaneous objects. The biological, there's also a biological perspective to all of this. One is genetic influences. Mood disorders run in families. The rate of depression is higher in identical twins than fraternal twins, 50% to 20%. Linkage analysis and association studies link possible genes and dispositions for this for depression. The depressed brain. PET scans show that the brain energy consumption rises and falls with manic depressive states. As you can see in picture one, the depressed brain is showing very little energy consumption. The next day in picture two, the manic brain is showing very high energy consumption levels. Nine days later, in picture three, the brain once again is in the depressed state and is showing very little, if not any, energy consumption. Social Cognitive Perspective The social cognitive perspective suggests that depression arises partly from self-defeating beliefs 
and negative explanatory styles. In this graph, biological influences include genetic predispositions, changes in brain chemistry, brain damage due to stress and other factors. Psychological influences include negative explanatory style, learning, helplessness, gender differences. Social cultural influences include traumatic negative events, cultural expectations, and depression evoked responses. Now any of these can all cause or be caused by one another, and any signal one or any combination of them can lead to a depressed mood. Negative thoughts and moods. Now let's take a breakup with a romantic partner for example. Um, on the left is the depression um, outcome, on the right is the successful coping outcome. First for the depression, stable, I'll never get over this, followed by global. Without my partner, I can't seem to do anything right. Internal, our breakup was all my fault, which will then lead to depression. Now, in a more healthy person, it would go as the following. Temporary, this is hard to take, but I will get through this. Specific, I miss my partner, but thankfully I have my family and my friends. External, it takes two to make a relationship work and it wasn't meant to be, which would then lead to successful coping and hopefully a more happy person. Explanatory style plays a major role in becoming depressed. Now to put it simple, there is a cycle of depression. In no specific order it can be that stressful events can lead to negative explanatory style which can lead to a depressed mood which can then lead to cognitive and behavioral changes as shown in this graph. Um, it's kind of, it can be hard to break out of this cycle but if a person has the will to do so they can very possibly do it. The do's and don'ts. Um, I feel, I believe that it's important to keep studying the effects of all types of mood disorders such as depression and bipolar disorder and to devote more resources and energy into finding cures and possible ways to treat these disorders. I think it's wrong keeping the emotions to yourself and not seeking medical help or just help in general and the big one for me insulting and making fun of those who suffer from those disorders honestly just stop it it's just bad the people suffering with this don't need more added pressure on them by having others point and laugh at them not to mention it's just plain outright rude but what I feel is the most important thing to do is you know just to talk you know there's an old saying that goes something along the lines of you can feel a lot better by just talking to someone about your problems now of course I don't expect this to just magically fix everything but it's a great first step in the right direction and for most people and throughout and after the course of this therapy it's important that we keep focusing on psychological disorders and throughout new research experiments and medications we can combat psychological disorders such as mood disorders.